Greetings and salutations, people of the internet. So, I'm standing here on the threshold of runway 07 here at east of Scotland Microlights. The video you're going to watch next is all about the top five reasons why I took up Microlight aviation as my hobby, my sport, and the thing that I really love doing. So, after the titles, you'll catch me up in the sky. We'll go through the different reasons and a little bit of sightseeing as well, just because the views were spectacular today. And I hope you enjoy the video. If you've not already, please don't forget to subscribe using the button below and every once in a while I'll pop a little reminder of some of the videos up top so you can have a look at some of the other things as we go through the movie. Enjoy, we'll roll the titles and I'll catch you on the other side. Right here everybody, so the plane is now warmed up and we are ready to go. So I'm going to taxi along to the runway and we'll get going, shall we? <laughs> if the plane will move. Wet grass. So as you can see from the windsock over there, there is no wind today. So we're going to be departing from runway 11 uh, and we'll get up in the sky and then I'll tell you everything that I've got to say today. Quite exciting stuff actually. Golf Mike Lima lining up 1-1. Golf Mike Lima taking off 1-1 departing to the south. Last check. Here we go. earlier it was actually not looking very nice it looked as if it was going to be really cloudy and a little bit horrible but it all has kind of opened up for me a little bit so I'm kind of hoping we might get some pretty nice flying in as I was saying in the introduction earlier I wanted to kind of speak about the five things that actually made me want to take up micro lighting in the first place a lot of the things that, that kind of make someone want to take up micro lighting as a, as a hobby or a sport differs. They, each person's reasons kind of tend to differ. Everyone I've spoken to about why they do it and what it is that they get out of it, everyone has their own thing. So I thought, well, I'll make a little bit of a video and kind of talk you through some of the reasons why I decided to take up micro lighting. So, reason number one why I wanted to take up micro lighting. Reason number one stems from me as a child. Now, when I was a kid, I always wanted to fly. I loved the Superman movies. They were just bread and butter to me. Seeing some guy, obviously wearing some pretty dodgy outfits, flying around the skies was just magical to me. And it's something that I always think about, even now that I'm an adult a certain age and flying larger airplane around the sky. So I don't exactly have a cape. If I did, my propeller is behind me and it would get ingested. Uh, so that's not a good idea. But the concept of flying to me has always been with me ever since I was a child. One of the funny things that I always think about when it comes to me flying around as a child was when I was really young, probably about eight or nine years old, and I lived back in South Africa, I used to run around in the roasting heat on a summer's day in the back garden, pretending that I could actually take off and fly. And I used to have this really weird sort of thing that I would do, and I can still remember it to this day, where I actually used to tap my thigh on my right hand side in a certain way, and that's what suddenly made me able to go flying around. So I had these special powers, huge imagination even then as a kid. 
So I'd tap my legs in certain ways and then go flying around, but obviously the imagination runs right as it does when you're that age. And one of the next things that I then realized I needed to, to do was I would need to be invisible because you wouldn't want to scare people that you're when you're flying around. So I would be invisible when I flew around. So I used to lay in bed at night and think about where I'd fly to and where I would get up to and kind of sit on things and just generally watch what people were doing. Not in a creepy way, I was eight years old, but it was it was really kind of like the thing that I used to do when I was younger. So the second reason why I have taken up microlighting as my go-to thing. The second thing is I always like having something to do. I've been like this ever since I was young. I have to have something that is kind of my own, that I can kind of do in my own time. I can get away from the normal routine of life and go and do. And, well, tied into the first thing of always loving the concept of flying, it just so happened that I lived in very close proximity to a airfield. So I decided, well, let's take that up. And so I did. So it was because I wanted something to do that I, I did manage to find aviation. Now, it's not always been like that. When I lived in London and I lived there for nine years, I actually took up singing. When I lived in London and I, I, I was a member of a choir, I used to go singing every week and I had my own thing to do. I did performances and concerts, all sorts of things. It was in no way, shape or form what I do now, where I fly around the countryside. But it still was something that I could do on my own, in my own time. And I really, really enjoyed it. So when I uh, moved up from London to Dunbar, which is ironically straight ahead of me at the moment, I needed to find something that was my own that I could do. And well, that's when I discovered, actually it's time for me to look at aviation as my hobby. So the number three reason why I took up microlighting. Well, as I said, I've always liked the concept of flying. I wanted to find something that was my own. And I wasn't too sure at the time what it was going to be when I first came up from London. That's when I discovered that YouTube has a wealth of information about different forms of aviation. Now, it is also very swamped with things to do with paramotoring. Now, don't get me wrong, I really, really love paramotoring. And I will watch paramotoring videos until the end of time because they're really interesting to me and I just, I get a lot from them. And you still learn a lot of stuff. Even as a microlight pilot, you learn other things that, that kind of relate to the sport that I do, even from paramotoring. And I suspect that it's probably the same for paramotorists, that they probably learn quite a lot from, it, uh, from what we do as well. So I started watching videos on YouTube specifically and everyone always talks about this guy because he is the bee's knees when it comes to the world of paramotoring videos and vlogs and just the stuff that he gets up to. So hail again, yay, Tucker got, yes I'm a Tucker got fan, I have bought merchandise from Tucker, I, I, I just love watching his stuff because he's, he's really interesting to see and some of the stuff he get up, the stuff that he gets up to is just amazing. Really, um, what I'm trying to say is it would be YouTube and paramotoring videos also got me into microlighting because um, I researched the concept of, of aviation, I researched what it is that you can do, all that kind of good stuff, and it, it kind of gave me the, the appetite to really want to progress with it. So, YouTube, and I now post YouTube videos all about microlighting. Um, has also given me something that I love to do uh, and so now I'm contributing back to aviation as a whole and hopefully encouraging other people to take up the sport. I'm actually flying around Trevorain Law today because there is no wind so I just love flying around this if I get the chance because it's just so pretty and you can get really quite nice and low and tight to it uh, and actually have a really good look. I just always get a bit nervous about flying past this section here because these cliffs on the side here where the rocks are quite angled, uh, you get a lot of rock climbers climbing in here so it's kind of like, are there rock climbers? Yes, get out of their way. <laughs> so, now to the fourth reason why I took up microlighting. 
as a hobby. I've never really spoken about it before, but my mother is absolutely the most amazing person you will ever meet. She kind of always is there. If I've got a problem, I can always speak to my mum about it. And she's great. She also knows that I'm an absolute junkie when it comes to adrenaline related sports and activities and I think I kind of quite enjoy giving her that thrill of knowing, or the worry rather, of knowing that her son is doing nuts stuff such as flying planes at certain heights above fields and, and all that kind of stuff. So really sorry mum but you are one of the reasons why I took this up is just because I love seeing your face when you know that I'm doing something daft sorry <laughs> I love flying over the A1 because I drive up and down this all the time and I can just imagine what people must be thinking when they say me going overhead so like, what on earth is that thing doing so we've got a new statue here in Dunbar. Uh, it doesn't have a name yet, but it's by the very famous or well-known artist that um, designed and built the Kelpies, which is uh, the kind of gigantic horse structures uh, out towards kind of Falkirk Way, where the Falkirk Wheel is. It's nowhere near as big as the Kelpies, but it's it's actually proving relatively popular uh, here in Dunbar. Um, but I always kind of wish it was a little bit bigger, just I think it would have been pretty cool. There's a few people down there actually having a look. It's it's really, I love it. I think it's really cool. It's really pretty and it's designed in the same way as uh, the Kelpies are. It's kind of those slatted bits of materi uh, material, those slatted bits of metal, um, which makes it quite interesting to look at and you get really interesting shapes and kind of sun coming through it. It's really cool. I like it. He doesn't have a name at the moment, although everyone's thinking he's probably going to be called something like Dunbear, which would be my favourite name, I think. Maybe a little bit low. Hello, Dunbear. Right, so the number five reason why I took up microlighting as my hobby. As with any hobby, you've got to train. Especially for something like this, you've got to do a lot of training, there's a lot of work involved, there are exams, all that kind of stuff that you've got to sit, so it's it's quite a lot of work. And when it comes to microlight aviation, the cost that's associated to the training and the exams and all that kind of stuff, it can all really add up. It really, really can. However, when you look at the costs associated to microlight aviation in comparison to other similar forms of aviation, flying three-axis airplanes or helicopters or the big boys of the sky who, who take up to 34,000 foot, all that kind of stuff, you're into like tens of thousands of pounds, in some cases hundreds of thousands of pounds depending on what it is that you actually want to fly. But the cost of taking up microlight aviation is actually significantly cheaper. Um, there's still a lot of costs associated with it, don't get me wrong. Uh, you've got to pay for all of the hours worth of training with a qualified instructor who knows what they're doing, teaches you what you really need to know and other stuff as well. So that knowledge is absolute golden and you really, really need to invest in good, solid training to make sure that you are safe, that you know what you're doing, you know how to land properly. Because taking off and flying one of these things is not something you can just pitch up and do. You've got to do the training. You have to understand what's involved. But it wasn't restrictive and that's what I really liked about it. The cost associated to taking this up as a, as a sport or a hobby was not beyond my means. So in my view, flying a microlight is a safe form of aviation. It's able to fly in much more conditions and it's cost effective. It gets a lot more cost effective once you've qualified and that qualification process can take a while to do but as I said earlier it's not restrictive and you're able to build it around your normal working life. If you have a disposable income 
which thankfully I did have a disposable income to a certain extent and I also had the drive though so, so those two things kind of came together for me to, to create what I, what I would call my calling to fly Temperature's getting cold. Ooh, freezing actually. So we're gonna make our way back now, I think. Oh check a few things. Yeah. He's fortune traffic golf, Charlie Charlie might be inbound from the northwest. 1500 feet, three miles to run. My theme is overhead. Right, so we are now in our final stage of landing back at the airfield. I hope you enjoyed that flight. Yeah, I certainly did. It was awesome. And uh, yeah, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, it's really worth doing because then you actually know when I've posted new content. Especially if you click that little notification bell. Really worth doing. So we're going to come in for a landing on runway 29. Golf my theme, uh, downwind 29. Golf my theme, final 29. Off my clear, clearing the active. Oh, at least I can feel my hands. Positives. Arr.